Eight. Chris Haynes was at the Spurs Lakers last night. Let's start with this. They're zero and three. LeBron says trust the process. Chris, do you buy it? Uh, I'm a buyer as of right now because LeBron James teams typically when he does go go to a new team, different personnel, they tend to start off slowly, and so that's why I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt right now. But the way they're losing, especially the way that they lost last night, I, I, I'm disturbed a little bit. Well, what what bothered you last night? Well, I, you know, I said this before. In a in a few minutes, the Laker fan base got a glimpse of LeBron James' heroics that you know that he's endured through all throughout his career. But also, they saw his shortcomings that he had as well. Free throws. Free throws. Um, Last minute, you know, last minute misses at the, you know, at the buzzer, and so things of that nature. So those are things that LeBron James people criticize him for that. Uh, but over the last couple of years, he's come on strong and hit some game winners. But as you still see, that's LeBron. You, that's some give and take you got to take with him. I thought the young guys looked good. Let's talk specifically about the young guys you like: Kyle Kuzma, Josh Hart. At some point, Luke Walton is going to have to make a decision and insert Josh Hart into that starting lineup. It, it, it's clear that Contavious Caldwell Pope is not fitting in right now with that roster. So he has to make a decision. Luke was asked that a couple of days ago. He said it was too early to make such a decision. It ain't too early. I think we all see who's a, who's a better fit in that starting five alongside LeBron James, and that's Josh Hart. And Kyle Kuzma is just playing big time, a long stretch three, uh, four guy um, in this league right now. And – those guys right now, by far, standing out. Lonzo Balls hit seven threes. What do you make of him? I like it, but there's still some opportunities where I've seen that he he's gotten open shots, primarily by from, you know from the hands of LeBron James, and he's passed those up and tried to drive and do too much, and it's led to turnovers. And Lonzo, he's used to having the ball in his hands, and he's going to have to get accustomed to understanding that it's going to be LeBron James's rock, and then secondarily, it's probably going to be Rajon Rondo. And he's going to have to learn how to catch and shoot. So the jury is still out on him, if you ask me, is if he can play alongside LeBron James in the future. But you couldn't bail on him in a trade, could you, because of Rondo's history. He doesn't last anywhere. you got to have a point. I mean, I, I like Rondo short-term, but I'm not sure, Chris, is, if he has a long-term personality. That, that's, that's a good point. But, you know, when we're talking about short-term, long-term, short-term, all we're, all we're talking about essentially is this, this year. Because that's what the Lakers are doing. It's, it's an evaluation period for a lot of guys. No, no it's an audition. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an audition. It's a, this is an audition sure. until the trading deadline. For sure, for sure. And, and it's not just audition for those guys on one-year deals because it's a lot of those guys. But it's an audition for Lonzo Ball. And, you know, I, I just don't know, Colin. I really – right now, if you ask me right now, I just don't envision a long-term future with those two. I, I really don't. LeBron I, and Lonzo. Le, LeBron and Lonzo. I really don't. I think Lonzo needs, needs to have his own team where he had the ball in his hands the majority of the time. When you're playing with LeBron, to get the most out of Le, a LeBron James team, you have to allow him to do all that he's able, uh, capable of doing on the court, and that is primarily controlling the Rock. What do you make of the fight with the Rockets? You know what? This is my little, this is my little thing, Colin. I know Chris Paul and Rajon Rondo is getting a lot of buzz, and rightfully so. That's yeah. the brawl. But you know what started it? What really started it was players and coaches are getting a little irritated and frustrated with the officiating in the way James Harden is being handled. If you think about what led to it, what led to it, this whole brawl was Brandon Ingram pushing James Harden. Right. Why did Brandon Ingram push James Harden? Because he was frustrated. Because James Harden initiated the contact in transition, got started the bump, basically bumped him all the way out of bounds and almost into the stands. And then that's why Brandon Ingram, out of frustration, pushed James, which started this whole thing. But if you see Luke Walton last night, he was talking about the free throw disparity, and he brought up James Harden and Chris Paul. That game was two days ago. But he still brought it up after the loss to the Spurs last night, which shows you that players and coaches are getting a little irritated with the way James Harden is officiated. When you talk about people yeah. talk about he travels, people talk about he hooks, people talk he initiates the bump. Steve Kerr last year brought you know brought up brought up James Harden walking and so I think that's what's going overlooked is the frustration level with James Harden. By the way, um, will there be a point? They're zero and three, and I, to me, the losses have been good losses. But will there be a point you'd you'd push the panic button if they lose the Phoenix next game? And, and I know, and that's probably still too soon to put a panic button. Is that their next game? For, next game. Okay, in where's Phoenix. it at? In Phoenix. Okay, so if they go zero for four and lose to Phoenix. 
And by the way, after that, they got some tough ones. After that, you know, so the next eight games, six of those games, they're expected to be the underdogs in six of those games. So it's not looking pretty good for a Le- so LeBron. So at three and Lakers eleven, squad. if if you saw three and eleven, would you trade like a KCP? Would would, would you make a move? Because I will say this. They got 10 guys who can ball a little. It's a fairly deep roster. Now, they don't have a great player after LeBron. Mm-hmm. But, Chris, they've got about 10 guys who can ball a little. Yeah. I mean, would you move a guy? Not not, 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 not even if they were 3-11. I, I think that's still too soon. I, I'm just saying I will push the panic button a little bit because I think if Coach Walton hasn't made any adjustments to that roster or to that lineup by the, you know after that Phoenix game and they're still having problems – that's when I'm thinking that's the next move, not necessarily wholesale changes. And that would, you know, the, for KCP, he, he's a great defender. I think he's their best perimeter defender. But Josh Hart's the better player. I, I, think, I, think that's, I think he's showing that right now. I cannot believe how good he is. I, and, I am shocked how good Josh – I thought he was going to be classic Villanova. Smart guy, plays defense, yeah, low ceiling. Yeah. No, and if you look at we talked about it in the back, Colin. Like, you look, about, look at last year's draft, and it's Kuzma and Josh Hart. Those are the players. That we're talking about. Isn't that funny? <laughs> you know, those are the players, not the number two pick, Lonzo Ball. And um, you know, it's not even necessarily Brandon Ingram. You know, it was a you know, year before that. And so they, the, the Lakers have great pieces going moving ahead, and there's still gonna be an opportunity to bring some max guys on. So Phoenix is the now I've never wanted to watch a Phoenix Suns game more than that one. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, they have that kid from Arizona, Aiton. Aiton. He, a- he looks like the real deal. Oh, wow. He looks like the real deal. Oh, yeah. He looks really good. Okay, it's Chris Haynes, senior NBA insider for Yahoo Sports. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.